the gear I use for backcountry skiing. Nikolai here, live from my garage. Or not live, but I just wanted to do like the comprehensive walkthrough of all the gear that I do use for backcountry skiing. First disclaimer is that a lot of this gear is sponsored. Uh, I do have sponsors, that's how we pay for these videos. But that being said, like I do trust this gear with my life out there in the mountains. And yeah, talking about that, like if you do want to go into the backcountry skiing, it is dangerous. You should learn about avalanches and all the dangers that are out there. So, you know, attend the Navi class, get the knowledge, but then also you need the basic avalanche equipment. Avi Beacon. I use this one from Arva. It's a smaller one, so it uh, feels light and slim on the body and uh, easy to use. Avalanche Probe. I use this one from G3. I like it for its weight. Like I carry all my gear in my pack all day, every day. Wherever I can save weight, I try to save weight. Um, and I can that on this probe. We only really need the metal at the tip for it to be sturdy. On the shovel, I don't compromise on performance, like to save weight. Um, I use this one from G3, uh, big blade, uh, made of metal. So the thing with, um, with avalanches is that uh, the snow does pack up like really hard if it's moving fast. So, you know, it'll heat up and then it'll freeze and refreeze once it settles and then like what you can like start digging into can be really solid. So if you're there with like a plastic blade that doesn't really bite on like really hard packed snow that's almost ice, uh, that would be frustrating if your buddy is under there. So um, yeah, I, I prefer to use a big solid shovel uh, for that reason. So yeah, I mean, it still fits in the pack good, uh, but it does weigh a bit more. I mean, safety first, right? Base layers. Um, this is how I start off. I always use wool. Um, Norna has this blend. It's like 90% uh, merino and a tiny bit nylon. So it's basically wool spun around a nylon yarn. So it's super durable. Like I've used this same wool setup for years. And uh, when I go traveling, I'll just bring like two shirts and just switch them over kind of in between. And it actually doesn't stink. Like you can go for days without washing, which is great if you're a ski bum like me. So this is like a a three quarters, so they stop here. You don't want to get your long johns under your boot because that hurts your shins. But yeah, wool, well, it stays warm if you get wet. And then I'll put a fleece on generally. Like this will pretty much wear all day, even if I'm going uphill or downhill. There are plenty of options. I kind of like this one. It's a bit fluffy, so fluffy. Going from the mid layer, I will kind of have use different options if I'm going uh, ski touring or if I'm skiing at the resort like if I'm in the resort I can have something heavier uh, Doesn't really matter because I'm just sitting on a chairlift all day or if I'm ski touring weight is definitely an, an issue You know like I want to be as lightweight as possible going uphill This is my resort outfit. It is long. It has good snow protection uh, super durable um, all the features that I need <laughs> to stay warm and dry uh, for a long day of skiing, uh, even if it's pouring rain. It's all Gore-Tex, three layer Gore-Tex, so it'll pretty much keep you dry no matter what, but still have really good, uh, good breathability. And it's also super durable. Like this, uh, the face fabric of these are um, really high denier, so it's like pretty rough. And if you hit, like, you know, I hit trees and branches and crawl over rocks and everything, and this, this uh, will hold up. And then there's a bib, you won't get any snow in here. And I also like the loose fit. Like I can be really like flexible and have no constraints around my, my ass really. And a big kangaroo pocket for all the stuff you want to keep there. What do I have here? That's a knife. So this is my touring outfit. Gore-Tex jacket, Gore-Tex pants, um, super lightweight. Uh, the whole setup weighs like less than, less than a kilo, I think. So it's super lightweight up on the way up, but it's still like three layer Gore-Tex. So 100% 100% waterproof, but like really, really waterproof and breathes really well with all the vents and technical features that you need, but nothing more uh, than that. 
And I find that like when I'm ski touring, uh, most of the time I won't even be wearing uh, my jacket. Like most of the time it'll be on my pack. So it's super important that it packs down really small. And like you can tell, it packs down really small. Like it gets tiny uh, and fits in your pack, which is super handy. I put a bib on the pants just because I like bibs, <laughs> like I said before. Uh, these are actually like a prototype, so they uh, don't look exactly like the ones that you can get in the store. I've been using them for years now, um, and even if they're really lightweight, there's barely any damage on them. Uh, so I'm super happy, and they're like super flexible, great range of motion, and like all the features you need in your touring gear, but, but nothing more, which is uh, key. And then we have the insulation. So all the shells that you just saw are just that, they're uh, just Gore-Tex shells. There's no insulation on them, uh, which is great, you know, because then you can adjust your, uh, your temperature. So if you're touring and it's kind of hot, but it's, it's raining and you want to stay dry, you can just wear the shell. But then if it gets colder, you'll layer on with um, insulation. This is kind of my go-to package. Uh, the down pants and the BT Horn lightweight down jacket. Um, this jacket is like super lightweight. It weighs only 160 grams and packs down super small like that. Um, so I can basically always bring it in my pack, um, no matter like how much other stuff I'm bringing. Uh, so that's really handy, but it's not the, the, the warmest one. Like if it's a super cold day out, I bring a warmer down jacket. This is a bit thicker, uh, the lean down jacket. So basically like being able to bring uh, insulation that fits the kind of temperatures you're going into. I do really like down because it's super lightweight uh, and it gives really good insulation. Uh, but sometimes I'll prefer bringing Prima Loft insulation uh, because it's, uh, it's synthetic. So it keeps its warmth better if it gets wet. That's the main reason I'll use these. And I always bring a thin pair of uh, fleece mittens for hiking up because they breathe really easily and offer that uh, minimal protection that you need uh, going up when you're all toasty. And then I have a pair of larger um, leather gloves. These are lined with Gore-Tex, so they keep you nice and dry, but still give you that dexterity of having a uh, leather palm. And I prefer for them uh, pretty short because I wear them underneath my jacket. So I'll have my uh, snow gaiter on the jacket underneath uh, the glove, and then I'll put the, the jacket over it. And that keeps you 100% sealed, so you won't be getting any snow in there and it stay nice and warm. And then I always have a pair of proper mittens in my pack. If it gets colder, these are the, you know, the ultimate uh, to keep you warm. You know, your fingers are together, they can warm each other up. But yeah, I always have a backup in my pack uh, just because you never know. Like I was on Greenland one time, I lost a pair of gloves down a mountain and it was like minus a bunch. So having a backup is uh, key for safety too. And then on my back, I use this low foot and 30 liter Backpack has all the features you need from a skiing backpack. Good for carrying skis, um, easy access. You have a compartment here uh, if you want to get two water bottles or for having your skins there. Really easy to find all your AVI equipment when you need it. Mark the zippers with red here. Opening from the back here so you can wear it uh, just on your hip belt and flip it around uh, when you're on the skin track and you need your uh, gear. Super happy with how it performs on the mountain. And uh, yeah, that's everything I need. I even keep my drone here in the top compartment uh, when we're filming. It's easy access in the middle of a, of a cool R. So that's, that's fun. And then we have skis. The kind of skiing that I do is, you know, it's, uh, it's free ride. Ski touring is definitely my main way of getting to the skiing. Um, that I want to ski. So the uphill is a huge part of how I uh, move around in the mountains. But then I still want the performance on the downhill. You know, I'm attracted to terrain where you have to ride fast and fluid or do air. So I need a ski that performs well going downhill, but I'm also able to carry uphill. Quick facts about me for reference. 187, 85 kilos. This is my daily driver, my one quiver ski, sort of ski, the Atris from Black Rose. 108 underfoot, rocker in the tail, bigger rocker in the nose, camber underfoot. Radius is 20 meters. I ride it in its longest length of uh, 189.7 centimeters. It's a super versatile ski. 
Like if I'm going on a trip and I'm only bringing one ski, uh, I'll bring this ski because I know that it'll perform on hard pack. I know that it'll perform in powder. It skis well at high speeds, skis super easy to turn at low speeds. Uh, really fun ski. Like my first year on Black Rose, um, I was pretty much just riding this one. I mount the Atris plus two centimeters from recommended. So by pushing it a bit forward, you get a bit more pivot on them, I find, and a bit more tail if you're going switch it all. So yeah, I prefer that. But like they will ski really well on recommended. All these skis ski really well at the recommended mounting spot too. If you're only getting one ski this season, uh, I highly recommend getting that actress. Julian and Kenji at Black Rose did a great job constructing and uh, designing this, this baby. I guess pretty much everything that I just said about the actress, you can also say about the anima. Pretty versatile ski. It's uh, 115 underfoot, 21 meter turning radius. Rocker in the nose, rocker in the tail, big tail for landing switch. Camber underfoot, it's a bit better at higher speeds. Like it's easier to dump speed when going really fast. I feel like it's more stable. But the drawback there is that when you're going slower, it's actually like maybe a bit more like dead on the snow. It doesn't turn quite as easily as the Atris. So it kind of depends on your skiing style. Like if you're playing around in the trees more, going with Atris, like smaller turns. But if you're charging harder, going faster, um, this is probably the ski for you. Like I know Christopher on the team, like he prefers this one. Way Staying so close to the rocks. But it's also like really playful, like it butters super easily. I mount them on the recommended mark or plus one. I've done both, both works well. Uh, I wouldn't go further forward than plus one centimeter from recommended uh, because uh, then I find that I just have too much tail and not enough nose. So Backrose actually made a new model of this one, revamped it, Julian. This is the Anima. Redesigned the shape a little bit, uh, made the radius a bit shorter, made it a bit stiffer with a carbon stringer. So the idea is to make it a bit snappier when going uh, slower with the shorter turning radius. It's easier to turn at, at lower speed. But then keep that stability at high speed that I love for the Anima and why I use it. So I'm really stoked to get on that uh, this, this winter. They're, they're in stores now. And then we have the Nocta. This is the sort of the ultimate powder tool. 122 underfoot. I ski them in the 190 length. 26 meter turning radius, so really long turning radius, but it's also fully rockered. So it has a full rocker throughout the ski, which makes them super easy to turn, super snappy. Yeah, so like it floats a bit better even than the Anima. Um, and it's way easier to turn if you're going fast in the trees or in deep snow. I ski these like back in the day when I was going to Canada or Japan, you know, skiing deep powder, I would be on the Nocta. Really fun ski there. I honestly don't ski them all that much anymore, mostly because, um, you know, now I'm mostly skiing around Norway and Europe and we don't really get snow that's all that good <laughs> or like that deep. So I haven't really been on them a lot lately, but it is a super good ski. So like if you're going on that big powder trip or if you're living in an area skiing in an area where you have consistently good deep snow um, or if you know, you're just waiting for that good day, uh, then this ski is, is really good, really fun. Uh, I mount the Nocta plus one centimeter uh, from recommended. Uh, makes it a bit more snappy. But yeah, super fun ski, really light for its size too. And then this last ski I'll show you, this is the, the Camux Freebird. It's actually the only ski in the range that I would have preferred to have in a shorter length. I take this ski out primarily if I'm working as a filmmaker, like if I'm shooting film and I wanna be quick up and down, moving around the mountain um, really fast, but without having that uh, performance aspect as much as I do, as when I'm skiing uh, for, you know, for myself. So I could have actually had this like five to 10 centimeters shorter. Now it's a 188. Pretty compact. It has a 96 millimeter waist and a 17 
uh, meter turning radius. It still has a fair amount of rocker in the tip, even though the, the main part of the ski is uh, regular camber. So it, it flows well in powder. It's a really fun ski all around, like unless you know you are skiing super fast or, or doing big airs, a ski like this will hold up. So, um, you know, if you're more of like a easier ski tour, highly recommend something like this. You know, lightweight, easy to turn, fun, fun ski. I just mount these on recommended. The pink, guys, pretty in pink. <laughs> um, the Corvus, uh, regular Corvus, Freebird Corvus. I got the the regular Corvus, the Corvus 193 uh, this year because last season when I was skiing uh, pretty hard packed snow on big mountain faces over in Lingen. I could have had like a more traditional build, uh, stiffer, longer, you know, this is the flat tail, long camber underfoot, like pretty flat camber, but stiff and long and then a tiny bit of rocker. So it's more like, you know, like a downhill ski pretty much. I didn't get to go on it this year because of Corona. So a bit of a bummer, but hoping to be able to take them out um, next season. And then we have the Corvus Freebird, which is actually a wholly different ski. Um, they, Julian just redesigned this. So I would actually say it's a lot like the Atris. Like you can ski hard on this, even if it's a touring ski. It has a, like a Titanal reinforcement on it and uh, um, rocker in the front, camber underfoot. What I say to people is that like, if you are going ski touring, you are sort of like free rides, ski tourer, um, but you're not going switch at all, you could go with the Corvus instead of the, the Atris. It's almost the same width, it's a 107. Actually a bit of a longer turning radius. Uh, so if you're yeah, a bit more of a traditional skier compared to like the JB type of skier, you could consider this pink Corvus Freebird instead of the Atris. Bindings here. Bindings for skis. So like I said, um, most of my skiing is touring based. And this has been like a gradual progression for me. Like I grew up here in Northern Norway. A lot of the terrain, if you want to get to it, you have to go ski touring. Um, and I've done the whole, you know, the whole progression from like the, the frame bindings, the frame touring bindings um, through, you know, the, the tech bindings and through like the hybrid tech bindings and like seeing everything that's on the market now. And this G3 uh, IN12 is the binding that I use the most. A traditional tech binding in a sense, like it has two pins in the back, two pins in the front, but it is also very different in a lot of ways. First and foremost, like do you have forward pressure in the heel piece? To hold you in uh, a lot better than like the earlier tech bindings I've used, and also the toe piece over grips. I don't know if you can see that here, but like so the toe piece here it, it grips more than, which gives you more leeway, more flexibility, so that it holds you in uh, a bit better than other toe pieces I've been on uh, tech toe pieces. So the problem with a tech binding traditionally has been that they're too rigid. So there's not enough flexibility when skiing. So if you hit a series of bumps, uh, you will pre-release. Uh, I feel like G3 has solved that in a good way with this uh, over-gripping toe piece and uh, that forward pressure in the heel. Because yeah, like you said, I ski this binding for pretty much all the riding that you see in my videos. So, you know, skiing fast on all kinds of snow and doing airs. I've been super surprised with this binding, uh, how good it has been performing for me. I came over from, I was using the Kingpin before, I was using some other tech bindings and yeah, I'm really happy with how how this one holds up. Like the skiing performance is, is good. I mean, there is of course a compromise compared to regular Alpine bindings, but the huge, like the huge benefit of a tech binding like this is just the efficiency of use and ease of use in the mountains. Just from switching around from touring mode to ski mode is super quick. Like you don't even have to take your ski off.
and then there's weight like you do want to minimize your weight when you are ski touring and i do feel like this binding does that uh really well here it's in ski mode that's how i ski it 90 percent of the time because it will release like regular binding if you crash, but it does hold me in for airs, going fast, doing all the stuff that I do. But then if I am going, you know, if I'm skiing in a no fall zone, if I do so where, if I fall over a cliff, you know, I might hurt myself or, or die, then I will lock it. So you're fully locked in, it won't release at all, which is of course bad if you crash and you don't, and you do want your ski to release. So I only do that if I'm skiing like super icy conditions or if I'm in a no-fall zone where a crash you know can have very bad consequences and uh, and I have some people complain about the din or like pre-releases on these uh, but most of the ones I've talked to haven't actually turned their din all the way up so that's my uh, advice just turn your din uh, to where it don't, doesn't pre-release anymore like I crank mine all the way up um, to be able to ski well on them uh, I do use the Z as well it's uh, basically a, a lighter version of the, the iron. And like, yeah, I put it on my Anima this year and it uh, holds up. I do find that they're not as robust as the iron though. I mean, if you're a lightweight skier, you're not jumping that much. The Z will do fine for you uh, for most purposes. But if you do uh, ski more in a style like kind of like I do, uh, I do prefer uh, going with iron it will last longer. Like all bindings break. Like I've had, you know, my Alpine bindings break, my, you know, I saw the Kingpins, they broke. I've seen shifts break. Like, yeah, the iron more robust than the Z, but I do prefer the Z. Like on the Comox Freebird, I will use the Z. Uh, and of course I do use regular Alpine bindings if I'm just skiing uh, the resort. Skins are of course for going up the mountain. Generally with skins, you can have uh, like mohair, which is uh, faster, glides faster on the snow, but has a bit uh, worse grip going uphill. Then you can go full synthetics, like full nylon, which has way better grip going uphill, but a worse grip uh, or worse glide, you know, on your flats. Um, so yeah, I prefer this hybrid uh, ones from G3 for, you know, my big touring skis. Uh, I find that they perform really well. Uh, they have this sort of snow plow plastic feature in the front to get minimal snow creep, which is when the snow comes in on the sides of the skin so that uh, they fall off your skis, which is no bueno. Um, it has a good tightening system in the back here uh, to keep them on the ski really well. And the glue is good. Like uh, if I'm out filming, we will do multiple laps and take the skins on and off all the time. And these skins last all day, like no problem. The glue won't uh, get worse throughout the day. And that's, uh, that's key for me. You know, that's my workplace. That's, I need these, these babies to perform. I do use the speed ones on my uh, lightweight touring skis though, just because they glide a bit better and I don't need as much traction, I feel like. Ideally, like if you do have the budget, you could get the, the speed, the, the glide and the grip skins for each conditions. Like you could have, um, the speed skins, if you're skiing powder, where there is a generally a lot of good grip, um, you could have the universal for sort of mixed conditions, and then you could have the grip skins for if it's really slushy or icy out and you really need that extra grip. So it's kind of like, yeah, waxing your skis for different conditions if you, if you do have the budget for that. But yeah, if you don't have the budget for more than one pair of skins, I would definitely go for these. The Alpen is Glide. Also for skins, I just pack them up like this, um, glue against glue, roll them up. I do, I find that works well. I haven't really had any issues with that. It's simpler, you'll need that middle plastic webbing that you can put between them. But uh, I find that this holds up well, it doesn't really uh, damage the glue. And uh, what I do find matters though, is that I, I keep them stored in a cold location throughout the year. If you keep the skin in a hot room, uh, the glue will degrade. Boots. I use this Hoji boot, the Hoji Free 130 Flex. So this is the, the last in the long line of boots that the legendary Eric Herlifsson has uh, 
the sign with uh, Dinafit. Yeah, it's my do-it-all boot. Basically, this is the only boot I use throughout the year. Um, ski touring, skiing resort, skiing the park, um, anything really. That's pretty new for me. Like I used to have one boot that I would take ski touring and one boot that I would um, go skiing resort with just because like you wouldn't get the function of the resort boot in the touring boot. But um, with this boot, I feel like that has been uh, solved. I've skied like pretty much all the boots they've designed since uh, the Vulcan like 10 years ago. So it has been a really long uh, line of development to get to this point where we are today, where you do have like a really uh, rigid, um, good, nice fitting boot that has an amazing downhill performance while you still have like a really, really flexible uh, boot for going uphill. Uh, and the really good thing about it is that it's all controlled with one um, buckle here in the back where you go, like now it's in walk mode and then one buckle change over, it's in ski mode. That being said, like I do actually open up all the buckles uh, a bit more, like when I'm going uphill, but it does like the switch around from ski mode to walk mode and back is, it is super efficient compared to, especially the earlier um, models where you would have a tongue here that you would have to take uh, on and off uh, when switching modes. This is just super quick. Uh, you don't need to do that while still having like the same performance, both uphill and downhill, uh, thanks to the Hoji lock system that um, I'm sure you can check out on their website. It's a pretty narrow fit. It has a toe welt, super good for crampons. I missed that in the earlier version. And I used uh, the stock liner actually, uh, the Cetus. Uh, liner, it's heat moldable, fits really well. I did put in a custom footbed uh, from the guys at Sol, thank you. And I also put in a spoiler there in the back. Just makes it a bit more aggressive, uh, the stance, and I find that it holds me in uh, a little bit better. So yeah, this is the do-it-all boot for me. Uh, hope for a few years, I hate changing boots, it's the worst. Uh, getting into a new boot, just to you know make it fit your foot properly and get used to it. So I hope to ski these for many years to come. And then on my head, always wear a helmet when I ski. Safety first. And this is the Jilbo Hal. Does a good job of protecting my head when I crash. I use uh, Jilbo goggles and eyewear as well. The cool thing about Jilbo is like, this is what they use for all the Himalaya expeditions. All the guides uh, use these in the mountains. Like it's super high quality. And they all come with uh, photochromatic uh, lenses or lens options. So I basically use the same goggles for all conditions because the, the lens actually adapts to the light. So if it's really uh, bright out, they go darker. If it's more flat light, they go lighter, which is really good. No electronics, it's all like chemistry in there that does it, uh, which is sweet. And they have really good ventilation and uh, no issues with fogging. So uh, yeah, highly recommend this. Uh, boots. Then we have ice axis. Um, I use this one from Blue Ice. Uh, now, super lightweight, um, but you have this little grip in the back when you're ah, trying to stay alive up there. And then for traveling, I use this ski bag from DB. Packs down super small when you're not using it. So the key thing with this bag is that the top rolls down uh, when you put your ski in it, creating a, a rigid frame. So you can actually roll it on the wheels without the bag sagging on the ground, which would ruin all my other ski bags back in the day. So uh, yeah, I've had this bag for like six years, I think. I have a few bruises on it, but it protects the gear super well. It has this rib cage system um, that protects all my gear and yeah, it lasts forever, so. And then the last question I always get is like, what is our camera setup on set? And like, it's this basically most of the time, a GoPro and a drone. That's how we film most of the things out there. Uh, I mean, of course, sometimes we shoot on reds or bigger cameras, but um, all you need out there is a little drone and a little camera and you can go on all these adventures and share it with whoever you want. So quick shout out to uh, Moonlight Mountain Gear who makes the headlamps that I used to light this, uh, this whole video with uh, and also the stuff that we use to ski uh, at night. It's probably the best on the market right now, super lightweight. Uh, with a ton of light for a tiny package. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope that helps. I'll
Hope I answered all your questions. If you do have any questions, shoot them in the comments. And um, yeah, hope winter gets here soon.